Hello, I'm Hyun Soo Kim from Hamalm Church in Chuncheon. Since I accepted Jesus as my Lord, I've been freed from the evil forces and I'm living a life free of worries. I would like to share my testimony on how I was able to live a life of freedom after meeting Jesus. When I was 10 years old, my family had an exorcism ritual performed to appease the souls of the dead. This exorcism made me realize that there is a world beyond what I can see. But at the same time, it also brought me great suffering. My father was the captain of a fishing boat. One day, his boat was met by a fierce storm and it capsized, resulting in the death of one of his crew members. The family of the deceased crew member asked for an exorcism in order to appease his soul. That's when I found out for the first time that a demon could actually enter the body of a living person. The exorcism went on for days, and on the last day, the exorcist started speaking in the voice of the dead crew member. He was accusing my father for his death. My father broke down in tears, begging for his forgiveness. Seeing my father break down in fear, it almost made me forget that he was my own father. He looked to me as just another human being, a helpless one, and I thought he might also die. The exorcism ended soon after, but that wasn't the end. Rather, it was the beginning of my misery. The exorcism was a shocking experience for me and my mom, who was 34 years old at the time. I've learned from experience that people you meet during these times of desperation and crisis can change the course of your fate. My mom met a spiritual medium and began to ask her about everything, and she sought answers through exorcism. She even had an exorcism ritual performed for my grandfather who was dying of stomach cancer. Of course, he still passed away soon after. But my mom went on as far as believing that one more exorcism could have saved him. She was going insane. My mom started doing all the things that the spiritual medium did, like climbing on top of the water tank or a straw cutter, or shaking bamboo sticks as her whole body shook. It was hard enough for me to watch the exorcism rituals, but now I had to worry about my mom becoming a spiritual medium herself. One day, my mom, in utter ignorance of my concerns, told me that she'd been possessed by a powerful spirit. And soon after, she said that a young monk had possessed her. I felt like my whole world was falling apart. In high school, I didn't have money to go on school field trips with the other kids, but I could bear that. However, watching my mom become a spiritual medium was more painful than being in poverty. Then I became an adult. My family managed to prevent my mom from becoming a spiritual medium, but we couldn't stop her from depending on exorcisms for everything. When I met my husband and decided to get married, my mother tried to stop us from marrying, saying that I would die if I married him. So I had to run away from home just so that I could marry him. Even after we had our first son, my mom kept telling me to divorce him and return home. Every time she told me to come home, it sounded as if the demons within her were calling me to live with them. Then I would curse at her with extremely harsh words. I told her to just go die along with the demons inside of her. I thought that I would be free from all of this when I got married. However, it turned out that my in-laws were not any better. When my son turned five, my mother-in-law was told by a fortune teller not to take him to any funeral homes that year. However, there was a death in the family and we had no choice but to take our kids to the funeral. When we came back home, my son became sick all of a sudden. His temperature was normal, but his face was turning red. We took him to the hospital, but he didn't get better. And that's when my mother-in-law decided to call a spiritual medium. During the exorcism ritual, we were able to see our son gradually turning normal again, starting from his forehead and down his body. The exorcism was over and my son returned to normal. But I felt so helpless knowing that I ended up doing the very things that had haunted me for all those years. I was worried that I would follow in my mother's footsteps and become a spiritual medium myself one day. And then I got pregnant with my second child. After seeing the exorcism when I was 10 years old, I can't recall where I heard it from, but I thought that Jesus was the only one who could save me and put an end to this misery. I tried attending a Catholic church and met people who went to Christian churches, but nothing really helped. And because of the pain I suffered with my son, I was determined to never allow the demons to come near my second child, so I started reading the Bible on my own. I didn't know exactly how, but I thought I might be able to communicate with God just by reading the Bible. It was out of utter desperation. I wholeheartedly prayed to God that he would protect this child in my womb. Then I gave birth to our second child. But things got worse, far worse than anything I'd ever experienced. The baby would cry every night. It wasn't just a normal baby crying. She would scream so loud that her face would turn blue. 
Seeing her cry like that every night, I was afraid what I'd feared had really come true. That the demons were bothering my baby. I couldn't stop thinking about it. When my second child turned four, my husband was assigned to work in Chuncheon, so I ended up living with my in-laws for about a year. One day, my mother-in-law said that she could no longer put up with my daughter's crying every day. So I had to take her outside of the house every night when she started crying. Standing outside with a crying baby on my back, I wondered why my life had turned out this way. The more I tried to escape, the more I got sucked into this misery. I felt like I was falling into quicksand. And I thought, who will save me from this misery? I didn't have anyone to depend on. I thought perhaps I could survive this somehow, but it broke my heart thinking about what kind of life my child might have. And then we cried, both my baby and I. My baby would eventually get tired and fall asleep. That's when I usually heard the church bell ring for the morning service. However, I never thought that church would be the place that would ultimately change my fate. My mother-in-law tried to convince us to do an exorcism ritual, but I told her I'd rather die than see another exorcism done. My life was miserable. One day, I looked into the mirror and noticed that I had age spots spreading all over my face. A year later, my kids and I came to Chuncheon to be reunited with my husband. But my child's crying continued even after we moved to Chuncheon. As she got older, she started staying up very late, refusing to go to bed. My husband and I had to drive her around in the car every night to help her fall asleep. I think we spent a lot of time driving around the Chuncheon Marathon course. After I came to Chuncheon, I opened a pizzeria. Later, when I was selling the business, I got to meet some people from Hummam Church. I took my young daughter to the pizzeria one day, and the new owner came in and said that my daughter had a gloomy face. I refuted this, saying that my kid was cheerful and as happy as any child can be. But he said that that was not what he meant. I felt my heart collapse. I had a fear that she had a spiritual problem, but I hoped that this was not the case. But this man broke this last shred of hope I had, so I got really upset. I wondered what kind of church he went to. I rushed out to find the pharmacist working in the same building, whom I knew went to Hummam Church. When I got there, an evangelist from the church was also there. He listened to my story, and then he said that there was an unseen world and things beyond what you can see. I was astonished. I had met many Christians in the past, but I had never heard anyone tell me these things before. He completely broke the stereotype about church that I had held. After that, I immediately started attending the church. I thought everything would be resolved at once if I went to church. I thought Jesus would suddenly appear in front of me and claim that he knew me. That he knew how hard I had tried to reach out to him when I was terrified of my mom's exorcisms and when I was pregnant with my second child. I didn't know how, but I thought he would heal my child at once. But nothing happened. The evangelist told me that all I had to do was believe in the word. But inside, I had doubts. I kept on wondering how I could believe. Without any real evidence, how was I supposed to believe in all of this? I mean, I used to see people standing on sharp straw cutters barefooted. But here, all they talked about was the word, and I wondered if that was really enough. One day, after the morning service, I was talking with a friend sitting underneath a tree. All of a sudden, my daughter, who was six at the time, started pulling on my arm, trying to tell me something. She said, Mom, it's blinding my eyes. Something is shining brightly. It's Jesus. He's making my eyes water so I can't open them. I thought it was weird that she was saying these things, but I didn't want to get distracted from my conversation, so I didn't pay much attention to it. But you know what? It was a miracle. My daughter started sleeping normally after that. My husband and I couldn't believe it, so we decided to watch her for a few more days. She really fell asleep on her own early in the evening and would sleep through the night without crying or waking up. But there was more. This six-year-old child would wake up early on Sunday, get ready, and all by herself, take the church bus to attend Sunday school. Furthermore, she would go around telling the gospel to all of her kindergarten friends. She was being so persistent that her friends would run away from her. <laughs> so, she started asking her friends to race her. When her friends were too tired to run away after the race, my daughter would take that opportunity to share the gospel. <laughs> and before the holiday season, our pastor told the congregation that participating in ancestor worship rituals was actually worshiping demons. So when we went to our relatives for the holiday weekend, my daughter refused to partake in the ritual. 
She wouldn't even eat the food prepared for the ritual. She became so obedient to the word. She said that you could see heaven with your heart and that the Holy Spirit was the one who makes her heart beat. My daughter had changed so much, but what about me? As I said before, I used to have doubts and say, show me and I'll believe. However, my child, who had been crying for six years, was suddenly changed overnight. I couldn't believe it. Initially, I firmly believed that it was God who healed her. But as time passed, I started doubting and wondered, who knows if it was really God or not? Maybe she just grew out of it because it was time. Then I tried to shake off those thoughts. No, it was a miracle that she was healed overnight. Plus, she changed so much. But my doubts didn't go away, and I felt really pathetic. Meanwhile, my daughter was praying for her older brother's recovery from rhinitis, which he had suffered from for the last 10 years. Then, miraculously, his illness went away. My daughter kept it very simple. She said, you must believe it was true. She just believed that her prayer would be answered, and as a result, her brother's nose stopped running. This was so shocking. I realized that I really had to believe. Although Jesus was written about in the Bible, I had to actually believe in order to meet him. That was when I started taking notes during the pastor's sermon and focusing on the words. The word of God was truly amazing. It said that on the earth and in heaven, there were visible things and invisible things, and that we belonged to God. But the whole world was under control of the evil one. When I heard this, I thought that if this is really true, then there were only two paths in this world. One led to life and the other led to death. If you stood with God, you lived. Otherwise, you died. It was a sobering moment. And there was a scripture that forever changed my life. It was 1 John 5.17. It said that the evil one could not even touch those who received Jesus as their Lord. I thought, who is he that the evil one cannot even touch those who believe in him? If this is true, I thought, then as long as I believe in Jesus as my Lord, his authority will be my authority. If what the Bible says is true, then all my problems will be solved. So I really wished that it was all true. And then I came to believe in every word written in the Bible. It was because of John 2.22. The disciples of Jesus must have seen so many miracles while traveling with him. However, they all ran away when Jesus was being crucified. Jesus told them beforehand that he would die and rise again. But only after seeing the risen Jesus did they come to believe the scriptures and everything Jesus had said. If Jesus had risen, if his resurrection was real, then this Bible and everything written in it was true. I also found records of his resurrection in various sources outside of the Bible. It was a historical fact. Jesus had really risen from the dead. It was a historical fact that he really lived and that he had risen from the dead. Just as the annals of the Chosen dynasty were historical records about the days of the Chosen era, the Bible was about what Jesus really did. The Bible was a record. And the disciples were witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. All the disciples who had fled later gave up their lives while testifying that, because of the resurrection, Jesus is God. For these disciples to give up their lives, the resurrection of Jesus had to be an earth-shattering event to them. The disciples had seen Jesus' resurrection, so they had become the first witnesses of his resurrection. Now that I had come to believe in his resurrection, it became clear to me that Jesus was crucified for my sins, and Jesus was already here with me. I had been desperately seeking Jesus, but he was already here next to me. I repented my sin of not believing in Jesus and being my own master, and I accepted Jesus as my Lord. Amen. I was so joyful. I really belonged to Jesus. His authority was my authority. Now the evil one could not even touch me, and the evil spirits could no longer touch my children. Amen. I had kept an amulet that my mom had given me to keep me from dying after I married my husband. For so long, I had wanted to throw it away, but I hadn't been able to do it because I was afraid that something bad might happen. But I took this amulet and happily trashed it right away. The truth shall set you free. This word became true to me. I felt the chains around me break and all the filthy things that were in me go away. I felt the word cleansing me completely from head to toe. I received Jesus as my Lord and I became free. In this way, through the word recorded in the Bible, I met Jesus and became a free person. Amen. My daughter's struggle, which had been my biggest fear and concern, became a blessing that led us to Jesus. My daughter is now 12 years old. She tells me that, since she is going to heaven no matter what, she'll share the gospel wherever she goes.
and through our daughter, my husband also came back to Jesus. One day, I came back from work and found my daughter flying paper airplanes out of the balcony. On each of the paper airplanes, she had written a note saying, Believe in the risen Jesus. If you don't believe, you can't go to heaven. I told her that the security guards may pick them up and trash them. She started crying and begging that these airplanes would be left on the street at least till her dad came home. She was hoping that her dad would see one of the notes and believe in Jesus. And just as she wished, her dad did come to believe in Jesus. Amen. And our older son, who got sick after attending a funeral and had an exorcism ritual, is now a senior in high school. He also met Jesus, and he holds worship services and Bible studies with his friends at school. Some time ago, I stumbled upon one of his writings. He wrote that he could not stop sharing the gospel, even if his friends think he's crazy, because he knows for a fact that his friends will go to hell if they don't believe in Jesus. How would my kids have turned out if they had not come to believe in Jesus? I was in a swamp that I could not get out of on my own. But Jesus pulled me out of it so easily, and eventually he saved my whole family. I started living a life of freedom, and I noticed that all these age spots on my face were gone. In the past, I wished that I can get away with not wearing makeup for even one day, but now I never have to use makeup. <laughs> God listened to even the smallest prayer and groaning of my heart. Only Jesus. It took me too long to get here. But looking back at my child when she was six years old, I realized that it doesn't have to take long. It was a matter of faith. God really gave us a proof that all of us can believe. Amen. It is the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.